that's all that's all you can opt out of. Now you can opt out of religious practice, which is prayers or um, the Holy Communion thing as well, those, those kind of things. But again, you are responsible for the supervision of your child if you opt them out of those as well. Um, other than that, your child could be taken to the local church and the uh, young children will, with, if, you, if they are in a class or in an assembly where there's prayers going on, they will repeat the prayers and they would come home as I don't know whether you ever heard of this, the Dutch uh, um, and Martin, uh, one of our members who had a huge issue over this, his child was reciting prayers. Um, but that's what happened there. He didn't know that. Um, he thought it was just the religious instruction class and that was it. He didn't know that they were reciting prayers at other times during the day. And the child uh, was um, brought to that. And the child uh, just started repeating prayers and came home and started repeating to his father, which was, came as a bit of a surprise to him. <laughs> but uh, um, the school are not obliged to tell you that there is prayers at some other time during the day. They, they are not obliged to write down in detail where they are integrating religion into um, any subject under the curriculum. There's nothing in the Education Act, and I've looked, and we've looked at all the Dáil debates and the Shannon debates and, and everything like that, and there's nothing there that obliges them to do it. And there was no reason for them not to oblige them to do it, except that they thought that it might be difficult on the Catholic Church and the schools uh, um, uh, at the time. Uh, Micheál Martin, who's now um, head of Fianna Fáil, was uh, the Education Minister for, at the time, when the Education Act came through the Dáil and the Shannon. So, so that leaves parents in a particularly di difficult situation uh, because, first of all, you do, not, you do not know when the religious instruction class is. They could change it because they change it for uh, um, primary school teacher, te uh, teaching. And then you do not know when they are integrating uh, prayers or just even talking about a God. If you say to a child in a classroom... Uh, God made the world. And you're saying it to all the things. Now, the teacher might be aware that Patrick down there or Mary is, is not um, a Catholic. But if they're saying that to the rest of the class, the child just picks up on that. The, the child does not understand. At this stage, a five-year-old child does not understand any of this, these issues. And why would they? I mean, it's very difficult to understand how a five-year-old child can be a Catholic or even a humanist or... I mean, we don't own our children. You know, they have their rights, and they have a right to freedom of conscience under the Convention of the Rights of the Child as well. And that's a big issue for Atheist Ireland, is, is the rights of the child. We've incorporated all that whole area on, under the Convention of the Rights of the Child into our policy. Um, they're just children. They're not Protestant children or Catholic children or Muslim children. They're just children, and they should all be brought up together. Um, in, in the one school, in an, especially in an area where there is only one school in rural areas that, that should segregate children because of the religion of their parents is, is just wrong and it's morally wrong. They should all be brought up together. Any questions on that? Especially the opt-out things because I get loads of complaints. I think it's probably an important mistake that... Uh, uh, this opt-out thing isn't a, uh, isn't actually known in no. a lot of schools. Yeah. You know, when you mention it to a teacher, they haven't a clue about the Education Act no. and the opt-out, the specific opt-out that's mentioned in, in the Education Act. Now, now some of them do know, I'm sure, and pretend to be uh, pretend to be ignorant of it, but uh, a, a lot of them, I think, genuinely do not know that attitude is well. Says you should find it out before you join the school. You know, and that was actually said to us. Well, you knew what the school was like before you joined. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll actually read it out of the... I have the Education Act, the well worn Education I'll read the opt-out clause. But it's actually, actually not opting out in the clause and in the wording of the clause for opting out. It doesn't say the religious instruction class. It says opting out of everything that is against your conscience, which is gives you a bit of more leeway um, than actually saying the religious instruction class. Because um, Muslim uh, parents opt their children out of uh, PE. They won't let the girls do the PE. And some of them won't let the girls do music or anything like that. So um, 
they use that clause to opt them out of uh, uh, PE in um, schools. The minister may, from time to time, follow such oh, so it's just rubbish. The minister considers the subject as much. without prejudice to the generality of subsection one. The minister shall not require any student to attend instruction in any subject which is contrary to the conscience of the parent or the student, or in the case of a student who has reached the age of 18 years, the student. So it's the conscience. And um, then they talk about the student that has reached the age of 18 years. So they go to bed and they're just turning 18, and at 18 they get a conscience, which is is ridiculous. So uh, uh, the UN are pushing for, and um, the Irish Human Rights Commission are pushing for um, the state to change that thing about the 18-year-old so that it's, it, 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 it comes along and say, you could have very extremely clever 12-year-olds that have no wish to do religion and they're very interested in philosophy yeah. and all this kind of whole area. And I do get complaints from uh, teenagers who have been forced into religion and forced into go to mass and things like that. And they're looking to see how can they possibly get out of it. Because when they've refused to go, and some of them do refuse to go, they get detention. And you know, they have to go stay for detention. And it's just it's really, really difficult because they have absolutely no rights. At no rights until they turn 18. And um, some of them don't even realise because with the, um, you know, the, the extra year, what is it called now? Transition, Transition year. Transition. Some of them are 18 when they leave school or, or 19, you know, and they're, they're starting school a bit later and things like that. So they don't even know that they, they don't have to do a, a religion, that they can stick to it. Um, so, I, I, you yeah, know, just coming yeah. in there, I think as well from the point of view of the church, um, when it comes to the formal, actually the formal classes that go on, there's two and a half hours allocated a week. A week. Yeah. Uh, and you add up two and a half hours a week, it's an awful lot of time. Mm. Where a school can actually school? educate yeah, primary in school, primary school, school sorry, yeah. in primary school. So the, the, the boards of management can instruct the teachers to teach two and a half hours of religious yeah. instruction a week. And they have to do it. Yeah. And I think where the church are on to a winner with regard to indoctrination is that it surprised me that they didn't really come out that strongly, I felt, against the opting out. You know, yeah. I don't think it really affected them that much yeah. because most of the indoctrination goes on outside of those two and a half hours yeah. of formal instruction. Yeah. Because religion can be taught at any stage of the day mm. and can be integrated into any subject mm. at any time of the day by mm. any of the teachers. Mm. And when you add up the amount of time that's spent on the preparation for communion and confirmation, the visits to the church, the visits, you know, the, the amount of time done learning the hymns, and the prayers, they're usually done outside of the two and a half hours. So when you look at it that way, it's, it's a ferocious amount of time that's being spent. So even if, even if a, um, a parent decides to take their child out of formal instruction, most of the indoctrination, from my experience, goes on outside of those two and a half hours. Yeah. There's this whole area, just as Colin has talked about, indoctrination and respect and all these words. I know I don't want to get into the whole detail of all these words, but if, I don't know whether any of you listen to the forum uh, um, on patronage and pluralism and listen to people talk, all these words came up. And they're very, very important words because uh, uh, the Catholic Church and the state and all law and everything... Uh, go into the detail of exactly what these words mean. Now, the Catholic Church will say that ethos is not indoctrination. They're only um, uh, telling children about God and, uh, and all this kind of thing. And um, they, they accept that um, the religious instruction class is in indoctrination, even though they give out about that sometimes. You know what I mean? Uh, the word, they don't like the word indoctrination, and they're trying to move away from that. But we need to move back into that whole area because if you're telling a small child that there is a God, that is indoctrination. Because what can the small child do? They, they just don't understand these things. You cannot... It's, it's, it's one thing to say that to a child, but it's another thing to say to a child, um, Catholics, there's Catholics and there's Muslims and there's different religions in all countries and in, in our community and that. And uh, Catholics believe there's a God. 
and Muslims, Muslims believe in Allah. And then there's uh, um, Patrick down there, and um, his parents uh, believe in his right to freedom of conscience and that, to make up his own mind. Or you could see people, uh, humanist uh, children in school, and also Jehovah Witnesses and all this kind of... It's one thing to teach about religions and beliefs, and another thing to teach religion. Now, this thing about religions and beliefs is really, really important because uh, um, what the Catholic Church are trying to say and what they were saying at the forum on patronage and pluralism is that ethos is teaching about religions and beliefs and teaching about, in particular, the Catholic faith. But as Colm has pointed out, it is not, that is not what is going on. And just to go into just detail on this uh, point, under human rights law, the terms, there's three words, human rights law, and it's in every case that has come out of the European court, and it's all over uh, the UN comments and everything. The words objective, critical, and pluralistic, those are key terms that you have to get when you're fighting the education system, that you have to know by heart and learn to use them because the state are obliged under human rights law to deliver the curriculum in an objective, critical and pluralistic manner. That is your right as a parent to have the curriculum delivered to your child in those, with those words. Now, the Catholic Church object to the word objective. If you look at their submissions to the Forum on Patronage and Pluralism and to the Irish Human Rights Commission, and they have all issues with the word objective. They object to objective. They object to everything, but they particularly object to objective. And that is a key area, those three words. And um, the, the Education Act does not oblige any school to deliver the curriculum in an objective, critical and pluralistic manner. Those words are simply not there. So we've been pushing in particular, and so has the Irish Human Rights Commission been pushing for uh, those uh, three words. And I'll, I'll, the Irish Human Rights Commission um, got involved in this whole, I'll just go into them now. Um, have, has anybody heard of them? Yeah, nobody's heard. You probably heard of the Equality Authority. Um, but uh, they are legally mandated to uphold human rights um, in the country. And um, I have found they have been better to deal with than the Equality Authority because the Equal Status Act doesn't protect us. Forget about it, it just doesn't protect you. If you can refuse a child uh, in a, an area because um, they haven't got a baptismal certificate under the Equal Status Act, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, the Irish Human Rights Commission are legally mandated it's under the Irish Human Rights Commission Act. And I went to them when I was having trouble in schools, and um, an awful lot of other parents went to them as well. And eventually, um, they don't have much money now, the government cut their funding, but eventually they um, got together and they had a huge conference, um, this time last year, uh, in, um, in Dublin. And uh, we went along to it, and um, the humanists in Dublin went along to it, and we made ourselves heard. So they decided to issue a huge discussion, discussion paper on the whole education system, and they got submissions, and we all put in submissions and everything like that. And then they issued, uh, um, in May this year, they issued this report that's on their site. It's um, called um, Religion and Education, a Human Rights Perspective. What they have done is, uh, what we were pushing them to do, is that they have, have examined the Irish constitution, law and policy, and put it up against human rights law and po policy, and they found it to be deficient. So what they've done is that they have uh, made recommendations to government um, um, to feed into the forum, and th these recommendations are feeding into the forum on patronage and pluralism. And um, they're asking for just, they've gone into the details of the Education Act, and they're asking for, you know, that section that upholds the characteristic spirit of the school, section 15. Um, they've asked for that to be amended to take into account um, the human rights of non-religious parents and children. 